here are third class tickets to Nenu Oya from Ella. We're just about to leave Ella. Yes, we're on the uh, goods and passenger train. Could be a very long journey to not go very far. All they had was third class tickets, so we got a couple. It's super cheap. It's only, what, 60 rupees? No, 80 rupees each. Our next stop is in Nawara Alia, but the train doesn't actually go there. We have to get off at Nanu Oya and catch a bus. It's going to be a long afternoon of travel, I think. It's our train going in the other direction. Yes, this is a slow train. But being slow is actually pretty good in this area because you can spend lots of time looking at the countryside and seeing what's going on, which you wouldn't be able to do if it was flying through. Yes, the train is also empty, which we're a little bit surprised about, but it means you can just hop up and down and photograph stuff and things, and we're in no hurry, so it's a great, great afternoon. And it's raining, so it's a good time to be on the train. <laughs> The first part of today's journey is complete, the train ride. Yes, it was quite a long train journey in the end. The train does have to stop to let them go past the other way. But it was reasonably social and really quiet. Hmm. There was plenty of room, which is always nice. And it was good to see the view. It rained a few times, so we saw it in a bit of a different light. We saw some monkeys as well, fully wild monkeys, like in the National Park part of the um, ride, so it was really cool. And heaps of gum trees. It felt like I was back home, except there was no koalas. The next challenge is to get to Nuria Alia, where our accommodation is. It's about 8 k's away from the train stop. Yes, we are now sitting on the bus. There's been some very pushy tech drivers. <laughs> yeah. um, and we've been told the bus will leave soon. It's currently empty. It doesn't even have a driver. So we may have egg on our faces <laughs> if we're back with the tuk-tuks. We'll see. <laughs> Our destination is in sight. You may notice I'm wearing my jersey for the first time since arriving in Sri Lanka because it is quite chilly. Kel has assured me we're at 2,000 meters. Hence the, uh, the damp and the cold. I'm sure Sapu's mountain breeze, which I can see in front of us, will at least have some warm blankets. Look at us in our warm clothes. <laughs> this is the first time I've put on a hoodie in about, I reckon, six months. Yeah, this, uh, we've, we've got a really good vibe about this town already. We're just heading out for dinner. Um, the clouds are really low. It's got, just got a nice mysterious kind of mountain feel to it. We checked into our guest house and it looks super cozy and warm, so we couldn't be happier. We've woken up reasonably refreshed in our lovely guest house here in Nurawa Elia, right up in the highlands of Sri Lanka. We've already extended, so we're going to be here for at least four nights. It's well after midday, so we've had a bit of a lie in and got some things done. And now we're going to go and wander around the town. We are supermarket tragic, so every new town we go into, we have to go and check out the local supermarket. And I am fitting in with the locals in terms of actually having winter clothes on. The top here today is going to be 18 degrees and it's really nice to be in jeans and a hoodie. Al, on the other hand... I'm in the tropics. Is in... I'm in the tropics, people! Is in... I think it's a world called denial. He's in denial that it's tropics. going to be 18 degrees We are degrees in the tropics. Today. He even put his sunnies on. Sunnies are not going to be needed today. Yeah. Yeah. Sunnies. Short sleeves. Shorts. Did you put sunscreen Tropics. on? Tropics. No, no. No it's sunscreen? Not. Okay. Alistair simply cannot resist 10 rupee snacks. What will he choose? <laughs> three and um, three and one. <laughs> We've never seen many ones of these. Are they fish? Oh, I bet they're <laughs> seen these before. And Cal wanted one of these round things. So Cal's testing one of those out. Una! I don't know what it is. Is it good? Mm. It's not mung bee. 
Oh, can I it's like nuts and dates of some sort. Ten rupees, win. Oh, big one. There, there, that's your winner. What is it? Probably just more vegetable curry and a samosa, but it's really yum. Some sort of sweet. It looks lovely. How much was it? 20 rupees. It's like a date pudding kind of thing. Nice? Yes, really good actually. So there's a cool lunch they do in Sri Lanka, which is basically a takeaway rice and curry pack. It's one of Elle's favorite. And it almost looks like a bag of wrapped up, what, fish and chips? Or a drug packet. I don't know why, but it always reminds me of a drug packet that you see on those border control TV reality shows. So we're gonna go into one of the shops and try and grab one. Uh, should be delicious. How'd you go, Elle? Drug pack. I'm gonna slit it open with a knife. It's the good stuff. So what do we get in our drug packet? We get this goes in there. We admit they never look that good, but they always taste fantastic. So that's what you get when you get a takeaway uh, rice and curry pack. It's pretty much like the fish and chips of Sri Lanka. It's the afternoon of our first full day in Nuwara Elia and I've decided to push on and visit the Lover's Leap waterfall which is about a two and a half kilometer walk out of Nuwara Elia. It's a really interesting town right up in the highlands pretty much as soon as you're out of the very main part of town you see uh, market gardens everywhere mainly winter veg, a lot of cabbage, uh, broccoli uh, cauliflowers and uh, onions, carrots, things like that, just everywhere. Every little stretch of flat land uh, between the houses is being used and there's also lots of uh, terraced uh, gardens just really making the most of it. Very commercial uh, gardening area. Well I found this random attractive little waterfall on the road to Lover's Leap. Well I didn't see a lot of water coming down. It's quite a climb. Somewhere up these stairs, the locals are smiling and nodding, so I feel I'm on the right track. I've made it, and no surprises, I went the hard way. There's lots of other people up here that went the easy way. Uh, all Sri Lankan tourists, which is kind of fun. And uh, everything's getting a bit wet, so I'll put it away, see if I can make it down the easy way. Well, after scrambling up Nuwara Elia's only freshwater source, right up through the creek and the rocks and things like that, the way the guy told me to go, I get to the top and there's this really well-formed track down from the waterfall that you can see behind me. And I've just popped out in this little tea plantation by going the long way down. Judging by the tuk-tuks, I'd say it's gonna be a very long way down. Well, taking the long way down, and I've found myself in Pedro uh, T Estates. So, so the Pedro factory is just over there, you can't quite see it. And I'm standing by the tea bushes or tea plants that were planted by the Duke of Edinburgh in 1954 to commemorate his uh, visit here. Just walking back along the main road, it stopped raining, and the market gardens are absolutely stunning and there's houses scattered all between them. It's gorgeous. This has been a much bigger day than I expected. Snacks. Takeaway night. <laughs> We're getting a egg kotu and an egg fried rice. It's been a big day. I tell you, it's just so nice being in 
like a cool climate for a change. I'm sure it won't last, we're gonna love the beach, but at the moment we are really enjoying just, yeah, the cool. As you would have seen, just walked past this guy selling a massive thing of peanuts. We could buy a little servings of peanuts and just took one. Keep um, going. I didn't think that was okay. Apparently, if you're a copy, you can just take peanuts. 